What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're going to check out 10 catastrophic flops in WWE. Well, this is a thing that it tends to happen from time to time. Sometimes things get pitched in the in the board meetings or in the storyboard meetings. Like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. I, I think this is going to be good. And then when it actually happens, it's a complete failure. And that's sometimes the risk of entertainment. Some things you may think sounds good on paper and then you actually put it into practice doesn't really work out so we're gonna check out some of these moments uh where i'm sure vince thought oh this would be great and then it just turned out to be fucking awful or it didn't didn't really plan out like they expected it but appreciate all love and support let's do this thing to man. keeping wwe fresh and current is new and innovative ideas throughout wwe history oh, several bro, ideas have been presented not the anonymous WWE general that have manager completely flopped either from a creative or financial perspective. WWE management fully expected these ideas to be extremely successful, but they weren't. And WWE prefers that these colors oh, are never mentioned yeah. again, but we're obviously going to mention them. So join us now as we look at 10 of the biggest flops in WWE history. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleLabia.co.uk and our own wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, NXT Kids. Uh, due to the immense popularity of the black and gold brand NXT in 2015, Kids. What is this? WWE decided to launch a spin-off show for NXT. Huh? NXT Kids would be a show aimed at a much younger demographic. It would feature matches, but predominantly focus on fun segments such as WWE trivia and kid-friendly humor. The show would even feature literal children on commentary with Corey Graves, which could have been a unique way to appeal to the target audience. But only one episode of the show was filmed, and this was never even supposed to air, but someone in WWE leaked the show, so oh, footage wow. of the pilot is in circulation. It's rather rare for WWE to scrap a show just after one episode. Damn. It's traditionally prefer to give things a couple of months before scrapping them all together. I did not know that was a thing. It was clear that Vince McMahon wasn't liking what the NXT team offered and subsequently decided to scrap the concept completely. Number 9. Indian Expansion now in 2017, WWE shocked the world when they decided mm -hmm. to make Jinder Mahal WWE yep, champion. Yep, I remember that era. Mahal was WWE's resident jobber, so naturally it took fans by surprise that Mahal was now at the top of the WWE ladder. Now, the reason for making him champion was that they wanted to expand in India, and yep. Vince McMahon was of the belief that if Mahal was champion, they would have much more financial success. WWE planned on having a super show take place in India on December 2017, but they decided to take the title off Mahal one month before the show. This was backwards thinking from a business perspective yeah. as fans had already survived months of his lackluster reign and they could have easily put up with it for another month. Yeah. The super show in question would be made evented by Mahal in a huge match for him against Triple H. But in typical WWE yeah. fashion, this was a match which Mahal lost. Reports from the show indicated that the attendance was around 70%, which was significantly lower than the prior uh, year. The experiment had ultimately been a huge failure, and what WWE aimed to achieve was handled completely wrong and was delivered with naivety and spontaneity. Number eight. Yeah, they they really messed up when it came to putting the title on him. If you're gonna try to tap into that market, it gotta make sense. They we we know why they did it. You know what I'm saying? It it wasn't for genuine like. I guess you could say representation in my in my opinion. We it was for the bottom dollar, and ultimately it didn't work out. That was some of the <laughs> that was a rough period for SmackDown. Oh brother, stand up for WWE. In 2010, WWE launched one of the most unusual PR campaigns ever. The Stand Up for WWE campaign was focused on WWE ordering fans to stand up for WWE when they were attacked by the media. Former chairman Vince McMahon would even release a video message where he stated. The nearly 600 full-time WWE employees, as well as its 140 superstars, all work for one reason, to put smiles on people's faces. The inaccurate media reports about our company are not only injustice, but an insult to our millions of fans worldwide. The WWE pushed this heavily. They got every single wrestler involved in promoting the campaign, and they would even produce an infographic detailing how fans can support the company. 
But this PR Sounds campaign about right. flopped. It showed how desperate WWE were. Yeah. Was scrapped after a few short months with no explanation. Sound about Number right. Number seven, the junior division. A WWE introducing new elements to Raw and SmackDown is always welcomed, as it keeps the show exciting. <laughs> this was seen in 2005 <laughs> when the WWE the glass. introduced the Hell. junior division to the SmackDown product. It was said to feature major names such as Paul London, Brian Kendrick, Billy Kidman, and Jamie Noble. Fans were excited for the concept, but when Johnny Ace was put in charge of hiring new talents for the division, he made a huge blunder. For whatever reason, he decided to hire exclusively midget wrestlers, and WWE Whoa. had no choice but to present the division with these hired midget wrestlers featured. Wow. The idea, though, was a huge failure, and the division would be scrapped completely within just yeah, a few Yeah, it looks like a months. joke. Number 6. WWE Studios a launching in 2002, WWE Studios had been around for the past two decades, and for the most part, the movies that WWE had produced eh. had been commercial and critical bombs. Yeah. Whilst there had been some successes, WWE Studios had a rotten reputation for putting out the worst of the worst. Uh -huh. In 2014, WWE's financial records offered a frightening insight into the WWE's movie division. It was reported they had lost $35 million with WWE Studios, which makes it one of their worst financial Damn. losses ever. In recent years, they've drastically altered their approach for WWE Studios. Their output is heavily reduced, and they only work on projects when they know they can make a return. It took years for WWE to realize that this was the approach needed, and it was simply These a project that Vince McMahon refused to give up on. Number 5, WWF. I, 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 I don't even think... I may have seen the, the one movie with Stone Cold in it. I think I've seen that one, but everything else, and even in that, wasn't really that good. Don't... WWE produce movies never. They just they just don't hit, bro. Cause not everybody's meant to be an actor. You can you clearly see it's just the wrestler playing an actor. Or playing a character. It's not it's like the Hulk Hogan when he was in movies. Like it's just Hulk Hogan playing a character. Like it didn't work. New York. But due to the unbelievable success of WWE during the Attitude Era, they decided <laughs> to open a restaurant in Times Square, mm -hmm. New York. I remember this. Known as WWF New York. The complex WWE rented for the restaurant featured a retail store, a nightclub, and a viewing area which would show every single WWE pay-per-view. But whilst the idea on paper sounded great, the idea was incredibly expensive to run and operate, and WWE ran the complex later, renamed the world at a loss for years. In 2003, Linda McMahon announced that the WWE-themed venture would be closing. Damn. She would claim that this was so WWE could focus on other avenues. But in reality, it was because the venture lost WWE over $20 million. Damn. Number 4, Woo. Raw Dark. A WWE's flagship show, Monday Night Raw, has been on the air for almost three decades. And in that time, there have been some ideas implemented on screen that they would like fans to forget. On the 20th May 2019 edition of Raw, Mick Foley came down to the ring to make two announcements. The first announcement was that the introduction of the infamous 24-7 oh. title... And the oh, brother, that shit stinks! Oh my god, I'm so glad that that belt is dead and gone. Thank you! The second was a drastic change to the third hour of Raw. A Foley would imply that the third hour of Raw would be much darker and grittier moving forward. I this remember that. This actually excited that. fans, and it was a yeah. smart move which could have led to laps fans coming back to the product. However, all WWE did was dim the lights for the third yep. hour. Fans felt insulted that this was WWE's plan as nothing had remotely changed. Mm -hmm, I remember that. The idea that. lasted just two weeks before it was never alluded to again. <laughs> we were yeah, we're going to go dark. We're going to dim down the lights. It's going to be more edgy. No, it was still the same. <laughs> Brand return. The landscape of 2002 in WWE was altered forever when they introduced the brand split. During this time, WWE, specifically Vince McMahon, made the brave and bold call to bring back Vince Russo. Russo was lead writer during key parts of the Attitude Era, but his reputation following his disastrous run in WCW wasn't exactly the best. Yeah. Uh, Russo came in with a ton of new ideas, and most of them were absolutely horrendous. Russo wanted to strip The Undertaker of the WWE title for no reason, and he wanted to bring back DX. Even though WWE were planting the seeds of Triple H and Ric Flair joining forces to create evolution. Wow. It took just a matter of weeks before McMahon realized the error of his ways. <laughs> According to former head writer of WWE, Brian Gerwitz, McMahon personally apologized to him for bringing Russo back, which was a rare instance of McMahon addressing a direct failure. Number two, Damn. WWE Virtual Reality. The idea of WWE using VR technology for their programming is an exciting concept. 
In 2018, they began to put together plans to execute this idea during live pay-per-views. The first time VR would be available for fans was during I didn't know about 35. This. And WWE were reluctant to make a big deal out of the technology being available, and this led to fans speculating that Vince McMahon didn't understand what the WWE were even offering. Following WrestleMania 35, the idea would be put on hold for undisclosed reasons. I did not know that. Until Survivor Series 2019. This will mark the last time to date that WWE would use the technology for a WWE event, and it was never made clear why did WWE not know that fell out of they had the VR events. It came down That's to crazy. Reasons. So the cost of implementing VR on live programming is very costly. Hell yeah. The returns on this investment may have forced WWE to abandon the potentially game changing project. And number one, John Cena NFT. Huh. One of the ways WWE wanted to make money off John Cena's 2021 in ring return was with NFTs. This wow, I didn't know this either. Failure, so much so that Cena himself had to address what went wrong. Discussing the NFT saga during an appearance at Florida Comic Con, Cena revealed WWE wanted to put together a once in a lifetime fan experience. This kit is not just a kit, it's the belt, the clothing, an autograph picture, an autograph canvas picture, and an NFT. When it came up with the face value for what it cost, it came up to around $500 to $600 retail value and then threw in the value of the NFT. I talk a lot about failure. This idea failed. Why is it $1,000? Because myself and the folks at WWE thought $1,000 was a fair price point. We were wrong. We were absolutely wrong. This shirt is number 0500. I thought with a value like that, the 500 will be gone. We sold 37 of them. Damn. It was a catastrophic failure. Damn. I designed all my stuff. I was super proud of this. I love the design. It's one of those instances where I put my heart and soul and did the design and was really close to the work and pieces and market research. Yes, it seems fair. I think it'll be good. It sucked. <laughs> it absolutely failed. I took a chance and missed. Yeah. I'm sorry because it's obvious that people like the design, but it's way too much. Damn, Damn the bro. They only throw, sold 37. It's like, hey, that may be a cool shirt, but I ain't paying a thousand for that shit. <laughs> That's crazy, man. At least John was able to be like, yeah, yeah, um, we, we just messed up there. <laughs> that it didn't didn't work out like we planned on man but yeah man this this was an interesting video there's a lot of these things i didn't even know there was a vr version where you could watch the pay-per-views on the vr headset did not even know that was a thing that could be cool in concept but they would really have to really buy into that uh, i know a lot of people do have vr headsets and stuff like that so i don't know if they really bought into it and really cared about it and like wanted to spend the money on it possibly that could be a new way to experience wrestling pay-per-view events but yeah man that, that was this was an interesting video comment down below let me know which one of these flops did you not do you guys remember like when they actually introduced it on television and then you remember when it just disappeared i do remember the the raw dark and then all of a sudden you know what i'm saying it just they did it for two weeks and then that was it. Or if you guys remember Raw Underground where they had this little underground, I guess, battle pit or whatever. It's like Fight Club or whatever, but that didn't last that long. Yeah, it, WWE's done some things where it, it sounds good on paper and then they just kind of throw it away. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Row 2, 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.